bad start for Port Moresby community. NAS fund contributors unhappy with delays in super payments and learning about an East New Britain historical icon. This is the National MTV News with Mary Bartulo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us for Tuesday's news. Our community in Port Mosby woke up to a terrifying 2018 after members of a Papua New Guinea police constabulary walked into their homes and beat them while they were asleep. About four houses were broken into and three men were beaten while they were sleeping. One of them was almost shot. The Kogeva One community of Kaugere has identified one of the policemen and is now calling on the police hierarchy to investigate this matter. Earlier as 6.30 yesterday, the first day of 2018, a group of armed policemen drove into Kogeva One in Kaugere. They claimed these policemen broke into four houses and beat three men and two women who were in their deep sleep. Three the policemen all come down, all come go inside there, all gone, all fighting me. More sim, I am underneath the house, to me yet, like fighting me, one day, three people picking in me. All running me, plot, threatening me, plot. so me, sim, all picking in the time, me, plot, run the road, they come down, step, they come down. And all go inside, all broke him, lilic, mat, mat, the girl, blow me, all go inside, all get a room, blow me inside, all get a something, blow me, I'm damaged. While Elsie was chased, some policemen waved their guns into the air and opened fire, claiming they were chasing a man. Another man was badly beaten in his room and sustained wounds to his knee and the back of his head that was hit using a gun. Another victim was a sick man, badly beaten on his sick bed. The community have claimed to have identified one of the policemen. The same morning, a family's pet dog was also shot dead, and another dog also shot on the road. Peter, who witnessed what had transpired in the morning, said the officers appeared to have been under the influence of alcohol. They have reported the matter to Badili Police Station. They are still frustrated as to the reason behind the officer's behavior. Stacy Yellow, National MTV News. Over 30 National Superannuation Fund contributors are angry with the delay in the release of their monies. This morning, they gathered outside the NAS Fund office in Barocco, demanding answers. Some told MTV News they have been waiting since July 2016, and all they want is to get their savings. At 8 a.m. today, the door to the NAS Fund office at Barocco was shut while contributors waited outside. It started to get tense when more people arrived and the door was still closed around 10 a.m. What is going on here? They must explain to us clearly. The right information must talk to the man himself. 
John Wagu is one of the contributors. He says for six months he has been waiting for Nesfan to release his final payment. Susie Amo is another contributor, but she is assisting her uncle to get his payments. Susie says her uncle has spent four months with her family and the team from Nest Fun has not given him a definite time on when his payments will be ready. He's here for four months now. I'm thinking about going back before long Christmas. I'm starting playing at Christmas. I'm looking mostly lights. I'm starting at night. Come again. Me come again now. Please, that's fun. Come out clear and tell us we need our money. I'm not making money. I'm hard to go. I'm not making one year. Please, black and white money. Talk straight. I give you money. I'm not hurry up. And people are keep pressing, pressing. Oh, the man was all over. Super Tene is another contributor. He is also asking Nesfan to come out and explain why they are facing delays in the release of their funds. Nest Fund is the largest superannuation for the people of Papua New Guinea and was introduced in 2002. It has over 2 million contributors, most of whom are in the public sector. Meanwhile, Nesfan says their team is working on sorting out these grievances and says the delay is because of the festive period. Nesfan says it will release a joint statement with Kina Finance this Thursday to explain the delays in releasing the payments. Thekla Gunga, National, MTV News. There is a high expectation for public servants this year. Personnel Management Department Secretary John Cully told MTV News Today performance-based contracts will be closely monitored to ensure public servants perform to what is expected by the national government. Government business resumed today. Secretary Cully told MTV News all public servants will have to work smarter, improving leadership, performance and productivity. This is in response to the government's needs. Also, all government departments will comply with this direction to be driven by departmental heads. Performance-based indicators will be measured to track results and renewal of performance-based contracts. In the meantime, Mr. Kari said a leader summit will be held soon. Fabian Hakalitz, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. Among stories after these messages, police New Year operations in Leh, a story on training for small-scale miners, and the BSP market report. Don't go away. Welcome back to the news. An SKP from the Lorangao Jail is a suspect in an attempted sexual assault case in Manus. Provincial Police Commander Chief Inspector David Yapu says the matter was reported, among other cases, during the New Year security operation. DPC Yapu says the suspect is known, but he is still on the run with another five. Other incidents that were reported include unlawful discharge of a firearm and two arrests effected on homebrew and drug possession and unlawful wounding. Police in Leh during the New Year Special Operations apprehended a man suspected of firing at a police vehicle. He was caught along with six others who were intoxicated. The suspect was thought to have used a homemade firearm. Apart from minor incidents, New Year celebrations in the country's industrial city was generally peaceful. It was a relatively smooth start to New Year operations by Leh's Chinatown Police. Residents living along Chinatown, Back Road, 7th Street and Cassaway Road areas had been urged to close down all markets by 10 p.m. Random searches were conducted, with police also going on foot patrols. At around 10 p.m., police were tipped off about an illegal liquor vendor in Chinatown's Bumbu area. A raid was conducted, but no liquor was found. 
Police later conducted a raid in the banana block area and confiscated a small amount of alcohol. Police patrolled all areas of the city, including sections of the highway in the Mars and Situm areas. Roadblocks and vehicle checks were conducted in the Mars area, with police and traffic officers stationed at the Bugendi service station. We have to call it the Whilst on patrol, the Chinatown police were shot at by a suspect with a homemade gun. Police managed to apprehend the suspect as well as six others who were all intoxicated. They confiscated four 20-litre containers of homebrew and two homemade guns. Amongst the suspects were two women, the armed suspect's partner and a woman found selling homebrew with her husband. With her was her four-month-old baby. The suspects were brought to the Chinatown police station and locked up. Meanwhile, police apprehended three suspects armed with homemade guns in the tent city, West Taraka and Five Mile areas. Despite these incidents, New Year's celebrations in Lei were generally quiet, with police deployed to hotspot areas in the city well before midnight. Lei police boss Anthony Wagambi Jr. said this was a deterrent for most troublemakers. He acknowledged the community support through the Neighborhood Watch programs and commended his officers for ensuring that the new year was celebrated peacefully. Lucy Kopana, National MT News Lee. Papua New Guinea is blessed with an abundance of minerals. Whilst the country is known for hosting some world-leading mining projects, a key part of this sector which continues to grow is small-scale mining. The Mineral Resource Authority estimates that there are over 70,000 small-scale miners in the country. Given the huge numbers, the MRA has embarked on providing training through the Small-Scale Mining Training Center. Given the increase in small-scale mining around Papua New Guinea, the country's mine regulator, Mineral Resource Authority, continues to strive to ensure that high levels of occupational and environmental safety are adhered to. An avenue it uses to drum home the message of safe practices is through the Small-Scale Mining Training Center. Located in Wau, Moraba Province, the center was established through funding support from the European Union. Samuel Leonard is a trainer at the center. Oh, it's very, very important. Uh, since Papua New Guinea, we are known for uh, our geological location. Uh, there is mineral oc uh, occurrence everywhere in Papua New Guinea. And uh, some areas are untapped yet. The gold or mineral occurrence in their land, but they have not uh, tapped into that, that resource because they don't know how to, how to locate it, or how to mine it. So it is best. The training center is open to any Papua New Guinean. They can come, uh, get the skills and the knowledge from them, and they can go out and explore their own resources. And if they're successful in discovering the resource, they can go into small-scale uh, mining. According to Mr. Leonard, the centre has been established as an avenue to allow Papua New Guineans who are in the small-scale mining industry to understand the processes involved, as well as dealing with risks associated with this activity. The focus of the centre now is to, uh, since the beginning, and until now is to educate the miners. Uh, the basic concept behind is that uh, for the establishment of the institution, the training center is uh, poverty alleviation and uh, giving greater changes to the local people, uh, small-scale miners especially. Since its establishment, the center has conducted training for small-scale miners. The training provides an overview of topics, key topics including simple geology, mining techniques, occupational health and safety, proper use of mercury, and business skills in business management and bookkeeping. To date, um, we have 4,555 4, that have passed through our training program. We have 11 modules for level one, so uh, basically it's mine legislation, uh, background history about small scale uh, mining in Papua New Guinea, and um, other topics like um, occupational health and safety, business concepts, uh, mercury, uh, since mercury is a uh, is a, is a chemical that's used in the industry and it's been rampantly abused. So we try to address that, uh, that issue on mercury. And we also have environment uh, impacts. We, so we teach people to, um, to look after the environment in the course of their mining activities. Uh, and there are there's about 11 modules. But as we ascend the ladder, the, uh, the number of modules presented at every level drops. An integral part of training at the centre includes bookkeeping, all in line with efforts to build a savings culture among the country's alluvial mining communities. With savings, uh, our miners are still, even though we educate them on, on uh, saving, savings, 
they still struggle with that 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 reality yeah to save money so we would we would encourage uh, a lot of a lot of institutions like uh, NASFAN they need to come down to our people in that way if they participate together with us we do our part by educating them on the savings uh, on savings culture but we need these institutions to come in as well on board in our training program so that they can make it a reality to them uh, by marketing their products yeah. and with more people expected to take up small scale mining they are being encouraged to contact the center to undergo training that will help them improve all facets of operations training that is of a high standard so they simply just call us up or email us direct and we give them the schedule so they can register and the cost fees are so minimal it's it's like a crazy uh, cost fee you know uh, for 270 kina for our level 1 course and they can stay on site for 2 weeks they have breakfast lunch and dinner their laundry is taken care of and 24 hour security service and level 2 is likewise uh, level uh, 2 weeks level 3 and level 4 so as we ascend the level of courses the cost fee also increase yeah. Here with Tuesday's news, we'll have more for you after these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. The National Court in Port Mosby has refused a bail application by Justin Parker. Mr. Parker was convicted for manslaughter in 2017. The court found that Parker killed his chief engineer in May 2015. This afternoon, Chief Justice Salamo Inje dismissed Parker's application. Salamo ruled that two of the grounds Parker raised in his submissions were not convincing enough to prove that he had a chance of success to make a case. Parker remains incarcerated at the Bomana prison outside Port Moresby. A group of displaced children residing at the Morabe Governor's official residence has been missing out on health care from clinics in Leh. The children belong to a group of more than 200 settlers from a settlement in Leh who fled their homes at Sialum compound after a clash in September 2016. The mothers find it difficult to take their babies for immunization because they are still traumatized by the clash and find it unsafe to move around. Since the clash in September in 2016, nine babies were born here. Any pair of twins have died as a result of miscarriage. The mothers said they are still traumatized by the clash and find it unsafe to take the children for medical treatment at the clinics in Leh. Alena Rogi is one mother who hasn't been taking her son for immunization since she gave birth to him in October in 2016. <laughs> This group of settlers include people from Sialum, Pindu and Kabum in Morobe. They have been camping here at the governor's official residence at Top Town in Leigh City since the clash in September 4 in 2016. These include elderly people, women and more than 45 children. I have been teaching first ever assistant was um, provincial administrator. Uh, only been come same time, I'll give me like 10. Now I'm now working with group group. That's all. After that, we will have been stopped. Oh, and like that, money blah, but we had frequent visits. Lay's Metro Public Relations Department, headed by Chief Sergeant Kathy Rimbao, visited the children with gifts on the weekend and encouraged the parents to take the children to clinics for treatment. Provincial Minister for Law and Order Kiwas Nayos said the provincial government, disaster office and lay police plan to move them back to the original place of residence by March this year. People by start from 30th of January and from the workforce. Our aim is by March we have to get them back. That's the uh, latest uh, according to plan. But uh, if anything that might take Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. The New Guinea Club in Rabaul is not as popular as any other big hotels in East New Britain province, but it's a historical center. 
Established in 1919, the once party hub for the colonial rulers has now become home, not just for war relics, but original records of the colonial administration and the first sailors who navigated the Pacific. Edwin Fidelis brings us this story from Kokopo. And this was the famous New Guinea Club. We've come to the New Guinea Club, one of the oldest party hubs in East Newbiton province, tucked away at the back of the volcanic town of Rabaul. It is an ideal location built by the colonial administration for parting and leisure. The club was established in 1919. In its glory days, it was a businessman's club with strict guidelines. The walls still show the bum holes from World War II. You see the bum holes? Although it suffered extensive damages from the World Wars, it has been rebuilt numerous times. The patron of the club, Susan McGray, showed me through the interior. Once a party hub is now something else. Inside, the club has been transformed into a museum that holds some of the oldest memory of war, the stories of the colonial administration and even the first seafarers who traveled across the Pacific. Almost 99 years later, and this is now what it looks like today. And then this was the famous New Guinea Club. During World War II, it was Yamamoto's officer's mess. But before that, it was the German club. There's been something here since... since 1914. So this is one of the oldest um, buildings and the Japanese used this building during World War II. Now it's a little museum, there's only a few members left. In recent years, East New Britain has got the recognition as a tourism hotspot. More tourist ship ferry tourists into the province every year and a significant portion of those tourists visit historical sites like the New Guinea Club. Today the centre doesn't get much visitors as it used to back in the years. The club patron hopes the historical club will get recognition from the East New Britain provincial government for a facelift, but they aren't sure if that help would come. Some of the tour operators are fantastic. They, there's an honour system and when they have a group coming through they, they pay um, at the end of the month. They're fantastic, but a lot of people will try and come in and not contribute anything and it's such a shame because we need that for our electricity and Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Kokopo. You're watching National MTV News. Don't go away. Up next, we have some sporting updates in Trukai Sports. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. Semi-finals for the annual NCD Governors Cup kicked off today at the Connie Tigers Oval. Over 50 teams were registered for this competition. Coordinator Felix Atusa says there were no major hiccups and they expect a smooth run to the cup finals. Major semi-finals. With most sports taking a break for the festive period, rugby league continued the momentum from last year into 2018. At the muddy turf of Connie Tigers Oval, Teams with torn and tainted jerseys covered in dirt rubbed shoulders with sheer determination for the most coveted prize in this part of the city, the NCD Governor's Cup. I played my freeway bombers by playing my city roadbacks. I played my animal giants by playing freeway bombers. I played my Makana Cowboys by playing my winner, but now it's like game of the Kamap Stapel, but I've United won them. Uh, United want them, uh, Connie Falcons, winner blood by meeting uh, Makana Cowboys. The prizes on offer in the men's ninth competition include the plate and bowl playoff and of course the top prize, the Governor's Cup. Nalo bowl em ami plagarim Saraga Survivors, plagarim Uri Navani Riders, Riders Namona, and all slow all four blood bowls all led by playoff not the ten to play winner by advance colong a grand final. The women's competition also held currently. The competition saw five teams play for the cup. I got them five black teams who have been take part. Na first and second been play. MD8 Mosquitoes, Lusa Blongol, City Redbacks, and Bakam and Bakam play my five more Congos now it's like game. A concern for tournament coordinator Felix Atusa. A slight delay in today's events could result in some games postponed to tomorrow. Plus start league league league. So me plan your thing or some by me plan finish. A lot of time long I've finished my work at the major semi-finals. If only me plus 15 some games go on the hola, yes, me plus 15 by finishing 
then tomorrow when they play, it's a grand final. But it's appealing to teams to cooperate with the technical officials to complete the games on a positive note. Now we've got all teams where we'll come long one one as Sabah long in CDC where we've been come take part, or we've been come good, now we've been played, we've been compete. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. Here with Strukai Sports, we'll have more on the other side of these messages. Don't go away. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. The SPPNG Hunters will resume preseason training this Thursday, the 4th of January. The team will be joined by Kumul players who took part in the World Cup. Asen Watsenboas, Wartovopoar Jr., Stargroth Amin, Stenton Albert, Enoch Maki, Nixon Put, Moses Meninga and Willie Minoga will join the training camp in Port Moresby. Wellington Albert will not be returning after he was signed by English club Witness Vikings. There are a total of 32 players which will be trimmed to 25 at the end of the month. 15 new faces are still fighting to any spot in the final squad. The SP Hunters play a pre-season match against the Brisbane Broncos in Port Moresby on Saturday, February 24, 2018. Elijah Lavette, National MTV Sports. The cricket and the strength of the International Cricket Council East Asia Pacific Men's and Women's Team has been dominated by Papua New Guinea's cricketers. After a thorough selection, eight players were chosen, apart from players from Samoa and Vanuatu. They will be competing in the 2018 Toyota Australian Country Championships in Western Australia. The men's team sees six PNG players, Sese Bao, Damien Ravu, Kipling Doriga, Nosiana Pokana, Hiri Hiri and Jason Kila. All of them have already played for the Herbal PNG Baramandis except for Sese Bao and Damien Ravu who will be making their debut in the ACCC. The men's competition kicks off this Friday until the 13th of this month. The women's team has an increasing number with Brenda Tao, Vicky Ara, Kaya Abrua, Pauke Siaka, Konia Owala, Helen Buruka, Ravini Owa and Sibona Jimmy. Brenda Tao and Vicky Ara will be making their debut while all are experienced players playing for the City Pharmacy PNG Lewas. The women's competition runs from January 7th to the 13th. Stacy Yellow, National MTV Sports. And that's it for Trukai Sports. We go for a break. When we come back, the weather details for the next 24 hours. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. <laughs> True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Time now to take a look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region. Port Mosby and Popondeta to expect some showers with a top of 31, 32 degrees and a few showers for Kerama as well. A shower or two for Daru, fine becoming cloudy for Alata with a top of 32. To the Momase region, mostly fine in Wa with a top of 27, a top of 31 and showers expected in Leh. Showers as well and a top of 31 for Madang, Wewak and Vanimo. To the New Guinea Islands region, fine and 32 for Kokopo, Rabaul and Kimbe. Fine and 31 for Buka, a shower or two and 31 for Kaviang. Showers as well for Loranga with a top of 31 degrees. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg, all these major centers can expect showers over the next 24 hours. A look at the forecast for small ships for the next 24 hours. And waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island to Kerama, Yule Island, Hood Point to Samurai Island, and with waters of Long Island to Medang, Bogia, Wiwak, Aitape, Vanimo, and northern PNG Indonesian border, and waters of Manus and its western group of islands, see 0.5 to 1 meter. Waters of eastern and western Milne Bay Islands with waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel, Finchafen, and with waters of Finchafen to Vitias, Dampier Strait to Siasi Island to Long Island, and with waters of New Island to New Britain and Bougainville, see 0.5 to 1.3 meters.
and a look at the ocean forecast for PNG areas. Coral Sea sees slight with northeast to southeasterly winds at 5 to 15 knots. Solomon Sea sees slight with northeasterly winds at 10 to 15 knots. Bismarck Sea sees smooth to slight with southeast to northwesterly winds at 5 to 10 knots. And the Pacific Ocean sees slight to moderate with easterly winds at 10 to 20 knots. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. And before we go, a quick look at our top stories this evening. Bad start for Port Moresby community. NAS fund contributors unhappy with delays in super payments and learning about an East New Britain historical icon. And that's our new sport and weather for today, Tuesday the 2nd of January 2018. From the MTV News team, pleasant viewing. Good night. <laughs>